Hi again, uh, here we are to continue working on our uh, shopping cart and learning JavaScript al along the way. And uh, so far we've got our cart working and it's starting to display things in the browser, right? So we've got, you know, number of items in the cart. We got the total for the cart. We have a list of items here. But what we need to do now is make this kind of interactive and functional, right? And in the original example here, the completed example, what I'd like to do is I'd like to put the name and the price here and then add a button so I can click this and add a new item to the cart, right? So it would add that thing down here. Now, this page has some CSS styles. So um, I've styled the form elements. I've styled the list here. You know, I've added these buttons and the border here. Um, this doesn't have any styles yet. So, you know, if you're looking at this and you're thinking like, you know, these things don't align and these bullet points are in the way and I don't like the font, you know, don't worry, we'll get to that, right? So all of that stuff should be taken care of through your style sheet, right? And, um, and for now, we'll just get everything, you know, working here without styles. And then we can apply a style sheet to it, you know, and it can look like this when we're done or it can look however you want it to look. So uh, let's let's get started. So we need to have a form at the top to handle these two elements. And then this will be our submit button. OK, so let's add that to our page. Um, I'm going to go up to the top here and you can see I have a couple divs here. You know, this shows the quantity, this shows the, the list of items, this shows the, the total cost of the cart. Maybe above that, I'm going to add a form and I'll give this form an ID name of, how about, um, how about add form? There we go, right? Because this will be where we add items, okay? And inside this form, um, I'm going to make a, um, a label. And this label will say, you know, um, name. And then it'll have an input next to the name. And this will be an input type text, because you can type in any, you know, any text string for the name of an item, right? And, um, you know, we could put a placeholder in here, too, and say, you know, item name, right? You know, and if we, if we take a look at what we have so far, you know, it looks like this. I've got name, and I've got item name here as the placeholder text, right? And you could type the name of an item in there. So now we're going to add the price over here and then a submit button. So um, I'll make another label here, and we'll say price. Oops. Uh, price and then we'll add another input and this input will be type um, number okay and um, for number you can set a minimum you can set a maximum and you can also set a step okay so the step is like the increments that you can um, you know, the smallest numbers that you can add, right? So if you want to be integers, I think that's the default. You could say step of one. Um, what I want to do here, though, is I want you to be able to put in cents, right? So I'm going to say um, step of 0.01, okay? And then if we, if we take a look over here, we've got price, and I can type in uh, $12.00. And this is not super useful, but you can see if I click on the little tiny stepper here, you know, it's stepping in cents, okay? Okay, so that's really great. Um, so let's take a quick look at this too. You can see I've got the label surrounding the input. So this associates this label name with the input that's inside here. And that means that if I click on the label, you can see the input becomes highlighted, right? Um, and that's kind of important. It's not so important for these inputs, but when you make radio buttons and checkboxes, that it's super important, okay? But for these, you know, this is just good practice, right? So now let's add a submit button. So I'm going to add a button at the bottom here. So I'm still inside the form. And be careful about these closing tags, right? So the input doesn't have a closing tag, right? And it should be inside, like all of this should be inside the label, okay? So now the button here, maybe I'll say, you know, add item because that's what this button's going to do. And I want this button to submit the form, okay? So what I'll do is I'll give it a type of submit, 
okay? Um, so that's pretty good. Now let's add a little bit of JavaScript to handle this form submission. Now, this is a little weird. It, it's a little hard to see here, but like if I refresh the page and I've got my add button, if I click add, did you see the bar run across there? So really what happened here, we didn't see a lot change because nothing changed, but if I click add item, it submits the form. And what that does is it actually reloads the page. So it's just as if I did command R refresh or I hit the little refresh button here. Do you see how the bar goes across, right? And that's something that we don't want, okay? So we're gonna have to um, prevent the page or prevent the form from reloading the page when we click the add item button, okay? So let's uh, let's first let's handle the form and then prevent it from from refreshing the page. Okay, so I've given the form an ID name of add form, right? So it's right here. Let's uh, make a reference to it. I like to keep all of my you know element references at the top of my script, and then I just get them all once here, and then I don't have to get them again, right? I don't want to type this long get element by ID every time I want to get to an element. It's easier for me to, to get it one time at the beginning, put it in a variable, and then use that later, right? So I'm going to say, you know, add form equals document dot, you know, get, oops, get element by ID. And then my, um, my ID name is add form, okay? And then maybe down here, I'll add a, um, I'll add a line just to keep myself organized. And then I'll say, you know, handle, you know, add form, submit. How about like that, right? And then I'll make a function here. Actually, wait a minute, sorry, my bad, right? We're gonna do, we're gonna say like add form and, um, HTML elements can handle events, right? So events are things that happen in the program, like submitting the form is an event, clicking a button is an event, and any element can handle the event by um, assigning a function as a handler for that event. So in other words, the function is called when the event occurs, okay? And there's a couple of ways to, to add this. You can do, you know, add event listener is one way. A shortcut that for all the event types, there's a shortcut um, on the element. And for forms, there's a shortcut to called on submit. Okay, so if we just say, you know, add form dot on submit, and then we put a function here, then this function will run anytime you submit the form, okay? Um, so this is, this is an event listener, we'll call it. Event listeners or event handlers, right? So we'll say the function that handles, like add submit is the event listener. Um, this function right here handles the event, um, you know, when it occurs. Um, event handler functions always receive an event object as a parameter. That's how these work. They always get one object and it describes the event that just occurred. It's got a bunch of information on it. It's got a whole ton of information, right? And we can, a lot of times people call it event. I always shorten it to E, that's kind of common too. Um, so I put this variable here because we're gonna use this, right? And uh, let's actually use it right here just for fun. Um, let's say E dot prevent default, okay? So the event object has this method on it called prevent default, and that prevents the form from refreshing the page, which is its normal default behavior, and we're preventing that default behavior, okay? And then just for fun to see if this is working, why don't we say uh, console log, and we'll log the event object just to see what it looks like, right? Okay, so here's our page, I'll refresh it, and I'm gonna go to the inspect menu and um, go to the console and you can see there's, I got some list items displaying. Let me refresh again. And then I'll click the um, add item button and you can see the page, 
you know, no longer is refreshing. I'm not seeing the little blue bar go across there, right? And I'm seeing the event object down here. Let me refresh and just get one of those, right? And you can see it says event, and then it's got it, you know, the curly brackets, and then it's got property value pairs, right? So this is just a regular JavaScript object. Everything, the secret to JavaScript is everything is an object, okay? Just remember that, you know, the more you learn, the more you'll, you'll come back to that, right? Okay? So if I look in here, I've got bubbles is true. That not that cute? Uh, cancel bubble, uh, cancelable, composed, current target, um, pre default prevented is true. So I guess we prevented the default and it's got a property to represent that, right? Okay, interesting. I, I never knew that, right? Um, event phase is zero, is trusted, return value is false, uh, source element. Oh, and it even shows source element is the form the add form, right? The target is also the add form, right? So if we want to, you know, reference the element from the event, we can find which element, you know, triggered the event or created the event, right? So that's really interesting. And actually that target property is very useful. Like we'll get some mileage out of that later, right? So anyway, um, that's what we got there. Um, now what do we need to do? Well, we need to get the the name that you typed in here and the price okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up to the input right here and give it an id name everything needs an id name right so i'll say how about um how about um let's call it item name okay and then on the price right here input price i'll give it an id name and we'll call it um you know item price okay so i've got input you know input id item name and input id item price and now what i want to do is i want to get a reference to those elements so you can tell what we're going to do here is we're going to say you know how about item name equals uh you know document dot get element by id and then we'll say item dash name and then we'll say const um, item price equals uh, document dot get element by id item price right okay so now we have a reference to these two things and what we can do now is we can get the um, oh yeah here we are right here we can get those things right so um, and remember, to create a new item, we call the add item function and we include the name and the price, right? So if we, I'm going to just put these in a temporary variable. So I'll say name equals, you know, um, item name. And to get the, 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 the text that you typed into an input, right? So a form element to get the value that was input, you use the, the value property, right? So if I say some input and then dot value, it gives me, you know, what you input. So in our case, this should be what you typed here, right? Okay, and then let's get the price here. So I'll say price equals item uh, price dot value, okay? And then now we can call on add item, right? So if I say add item, and then I include the name and the price, then it should add a new item. Now, if I, you know, if I refresh here and I type in, you know, Frisbee, and I really wanted that Frisbee, right? So I uh, make it 999 and I add it. It actually got added, but we don't see it on the list here because we'll have to call the show item function again to redraw the list with the new list of items, right? So after we call add item right here and actually we could do it at the end of add item so if you added an item maybe add item after it pushes to cart it always calls show item or we could do it here too because maybe you want to add items and then only refresh the list once right so i could call add item add item add item and then show item right so it's kind of up to you how you want to handle that um maybe for now i'll put it here in the add item function so let's be very careful, like it's got to go at the end of add item. So at the very end, once you've added a new item, we'll call show items like this, right? 
Okay. Um, let's see here. Let me reload. Oh, yeah. It's going to give me this thing. Like, if I filled out a form, it's going to say, like, hey, you know, you were working on that form. Do you want to, are you sure you want to refresh the page? Uh, that's okay for us. Let's say uh, Frisbee and make it uh, 9 99 and then I add it, and I've got Frisbee here for $9.99. Let's add another Frisbee. Oh, wait. I got some problem. It should be showing up. Let's see. What if I add another thing? Let's do um, a uh, can of beans, right? These are probably like a dollar forty-five, right? Oh, yeah. It got the extra Frisbees, but it didn't update them when we added a new one. Oh, let's check a bug. Oh, actually right here, you can see if you added a second item, it returns, so it never gets to show items here. That means that if we do the show items here in add item, we'll have to make sure that we also call show items before we return, okay? So let's give that a try, and then I think we're, we've got a pretty good system here, right? So let's uh, buy the Frisbee again. Um, uh, it's $9.99. So there's one Frisbee, and now I've got two Frisbees, right? And if I want to buy something else, let's do a something. Some things are like a dollar, right? And then if I add them, then I, now I've got a something, right? And there's the total, and I've got eight items in my cart. So, hey, look, we got a, a user interface kind of happening here. We don't have to worry about the styles. We'll, we'll add those in later. Um, but now we need a little bit more work, right? So. Um, the next step maybe is to add these buttons over here, right? The plus button and the remove button, right? So let's handle that in the next video. So thanks for watching. I hope this was, was useful. And if you have any questions, please post them to the comments.